That is the key to regenerative farming. Folks, today on the Stony Ridge Farm, we're gonna take you guys over. We're gonna show you how we're mob grazing our cattle, how the whole setup works, and everything you need to know about regenerative farming and mob grazing your cows. If you have any questions, please post them down there in the comment section. I'll be glad to help you. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you this well what you can kiss. That's right. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. It's morning time and I just moved the cows to a new paddock of grass. Today's video is going to be all about regenerative farming and this is by popular request. I get tons of questions on Josh, how do you decide how to move your cows? So we move the cows twice a day. We've got about 85 acres fence. We've got about 44 cows. How do you decide how to do this? And it's all based upon the waterers and the perimeter fence. Today we're going to take you around the farm and we're going to show you what we're doing here that's really working to make our cows fat, happy, and healthy without medications. Regenerative Farming 101. So what's it all about? It's all about this. This, what is this? This is what makes the farm. It's all about manure, it's all about grass, and it's all about moving and mobbing and mowing our pastures with our cows. What I've found and what other people are finding also is that what we need to do is regenerate the land. We need to build the soil. We need to not spread chemical fertilizers out so that we just get growth for about three months and then the soil dies off again. What we're learning is that we need to start with the soil. Your health, the health of your farm, the health of your family, the health of your animals, I don't care if it's your dogs, your cats, all of the health of everything around you depends on the soil. And here in the United States, we're killing our soil. We're tilling our soil. We're killing our soil by turning the soil up and roasting it, sterilizing the soil with the sun. And what do we get? We get noxious weeds. What does that do? That drives up the need for things like glyphosate to spray all of our plants. Well, then we can't spray the plants uh, that need glyphosate without them being genetically modified to tolerate glyphosate. So what do we do? We regenerative farm, guys, and that's what we're doing here on the Stony Ridge. All around us is a first generation farm, and I'm able to build it the way that I think is right, and I think you guys will think so too. So all around the farm, we have perimeter fences that circle everything major pasture wise. In other words, all the way around this pasture and all the way around another pasture over there and the one right here in front of the house is a perimeter fence, a good strong perimeter fence. It's a woven wire perimeter fence. That's something that's very important for your farm. Inside these fences are poly electric wires and those poly electric wires are just electric fence wires that segment off different pizza wedge slices of my pasture. So if we look out here in front of the house, um, this is about two to two and a half acres right here. I've got it separated into five different paddocks and all those paddocks are surrounding the water tank. So water is the key issue here, guys. We wanna keep our cows to where they can access water within 400 feet. I know you've all driven by farms and seen the desertification of those farms. You've seen cow trails running all over the farm. You've seen, uh, and if you haven't, pay attention when you drive by these farms, you see dirt everywhere. You don't see dirt here, okay? You don't see mud here in the wintertime. You don't see dirt here. We roll out hay bales out on the land. We don't put down fertilizer. We don't put down grass seed. It's a low input, high output situation. And our goal is to be able to run two cows per acre on this land. So <laughs> that's a challenge. It's a real challenge. So we're gonna have some fun. Let's zip over here and we'll go over to a water and we'll show you guys exactly how all this is segmented off, the kinds of materials, the post, everything that I use to help build this regenerative farm. And it all starts in the soil. <laughs> This is the farm garden. The garden has had no fertilizer ever. Never. No fertilizer. Chickens, the manure from the chicken coop is what feeds the garden. Honeybees are right here, fruit trees. Got 
got the wood miser sawmill over there to make our own lumber. Beautiful North Carolina sunrise. So we're over here on the other side of the farm. We just drove across. We are one pasture over from the house and we've got the cows way down here. We're gonna take you and see the cows, so stick around. This is a Mirafount 3390 waterer. And what you guys need to know is if you're deciding to build a farm, perimeter fence is number one priority. Second priority before you get your animals is setting up your watering system. It's something that I failed to do and I'm hopefully teaching you guys the right thing to do instead of the wrong thing. So this is again the Mirafount 3390. It's a two ball watering system. It'll take up to, I believe, 150 beef cows and I believe it's 75 dairy cows. What we have on the farm are black Angus beef cows. And what we're doing here, again, is intensive grazing. So intensively mob grazing our animals like we're doing here, I'm moving them every 12 hours. And what I'm trying to do is mimic what animals have done for millions of years. Bison herds have done for millions of years out in the uh, Midwest. Uh, and all the herds of wildebeest and such out on the Serengeti. They're all moving, they're all mobbing, they're all mowing, they're all doing exactly what we're doing here on the farm. And that establishes an ecosystem in the soil so that your animals and your plants and everything does better. So moving the cows like this takes them from an area with a high manure load. In other words, they were in this pasture before, they pooped all over the place. Okay, we move them off the next day and we give them a full 30 days rotation here on the farm. Okay, so by the time they get back through, the manure pats are dry. What's the significance of that? When animals eat near their own feces, they develop parasites, they develop worms. We don't, we don't eat in the bathroom and they shouldn't have to eat in the bathroom. So that's why we're moving them every day, twice a day. Now I was just moving my animals once a day uh, and I found that moving them twice a day left behind more forage and it recovered quicker. What a lot of the old school th uh, theory on raising your farm animals is let them graze it to the ground and then move them to the next pasture and let them graze it to the ground. So typically a conventional farmer would put their cows out on here for about three weeks. They would graze it all the way down to the ground leaving only the weeds and the grass about that high and then we'd move over to the next one. Well that takes forever for the grass to recover. If you know when you mow your lawn and you cut it down this high, it takes forever for it to recover. The grass dies, it doesn't do very good. What you see above the ground is an indicator of what's going on beneath the ground. So if your plants are luscious and thick, then what's going on underneath the ground is those roots and rhizomes are luscious and thick. And what we're building again is a soil ecosystem. So let's go over here to the waterer and I'm gonna show you how I've got it all segmented off. This is an electric fence situation. The uh, wire that we're using is called poly braid. All the fencing here on the farm comes from Farm Fence Solutions. I'll post a link down there. Uh, they're in Worthington, Indiana, but they ship all over the country. Let's look around at how we've got this set up real quick. So again, what's integral here, the central point is the waterer. It can be any kind of water tank you want it to be as long as it will sustain the amount of animals. And again, we're gonna go down here and we'll show you where we move the cows uh, this morning already. So this is a paddock. Okay, that is a paddock. You can see the fence wire. That's a paddock, that's a paddock, that's a paddock. And this is a paddock. You can see what I've done here, okay? Now we're really gonna show you. <laughs> the cows were on here yesterday. Can you see the difference in the forage here versus the forage here? This has had 30 days of rest and this was grazed yesterday. The cows will be on this in about two days. They're circling the field right now, but you can see there's still plenty of grass for these animals to eat out through here. You can see quite a difference where they're eating up under the fence. This is slightly overgrazed. However, once they get over here, 12 hours later, they'll graze it right on down too. So what we want to do is we want to leave our grass a little bit higher than what you think. Again, this one is overgrazed, absolutely overgrazed. You want to leave our grass about 16 inches high um, after they move off of the pasture. 
So this is a paddock, 12 hours, 12 hours, 12 hours, 12 hours. It's all centrally designed around the water tanks here. I'm gonna post up at the end of this video the entire drawing of how the pastures are all segmented off. I'm gonna post it right now too. You can see this is I think what we call the north pasture and it is all segmented off. I drew this out and then I came and I put my poly wire. So the poly wire that we use, again, this is a poly braid. This is a elastic type plastic wire with metal woven into it. These are step-in posts. This is called a strain right step-in post, basically. They just step right into the ground, press in, and they stay put. This will hold those 44 gigantic animals. So one move, next move, next move. And what I have to do is come in here and resituate all of my wires so that they have access to the waterer. So before, this wire was moved over there so they could come in mob drink right here. Here, they could do it there. They could do it here. That's how it's all set up. We're gonna go down, we're gonna see the cows here in just a minute. Each segment, and it depends on how many cows you have and how good your forage, how, how good and thick and luscious your forage is, each segment can be between one acre and one and a half acres. This is about one and a half acres, that's about one acre. What I do is I make smaller paddocks out of the ones that don't have shade trees in it, and shade is something that's very, very important for your animals. So let's go down here to the other water and we'll see the cows and I'll show you how that's all segmented off and what the cows are gonna do. I hope this has given you guys some great food for thought on your farm if you're deciding to do something with your property or just educating you on a different way. We're not farming like grandpa here, we're farming regeneratively, we're building soil and it all starts in the soil. Your health starts in the soil, believe it or not. So we're down here to where I move the cows and this is where we bring the cows through the fence every single day. There's a little handle down here and all I do is just unhook that handle. This is grounded and this is not. This will shock you and this will not. So I take that handle loose and I open the gate and the cows simply travel right through this gate and then I'll take it and hook it right back into place. And it's just that simple to move the cows. It literally only takes about five minutes to move the cows every 12 hours. We're gonna lay this on the ground and I'm gonna drive over it real quick. We're gonna zip over here and we'll show you the water system that we have with these cows. Guys, this is the electric fence charger that I use. It's a solar panel, solar charger. It's called the IntelliShock 120. I'll post a link in the video description. Basically, all it does, the ground connects to ground, which is our post right here. And then the positive simply clamps right onto the wire there. We turn the power on, one button, and our fence is energized. You don't see them bum rushing the gate either. They're not chasing me down. They're not trying to get through the gate. They've got plenty of grub, and that's what it's all about. These are eating machines, guys. These cows eat all day, every day. That's all they do is eat and make baby cows. Hey, girls. We got ladies. These are all Black Angus brood cows, guys. See, they're all healthy and happy. They're doing what cows are supposed to do. They're eating grass, not grain. Number 202 was the second cow born this year on the Stony Ridge Farm. And again, guys, you can see just how beautiful the grass is. Each paddock, and this is Susie right here, each paddock, let's see if Susie will let me rub her. Hey, Susie girl. Oh, she's a shy one today. Each paddock has a mineral block. Every paddock has a mineral block. The cows need mineral. That's their Gatorade, okay? Look at this big girl right here. What you doing, big girl? How you doing? <laughs> All these cows have been fantastic moms. And again, we're not supplementing them. We're only giving them grass. Look at them go. Fat, healthy, happy cows here in the hottest part of the summer, the driest part of the summer, and my grass is green. The farms around me, the grass is brown. So we get a special treat today. We get to see Tammy, the guard donkey. Tammy is our donkey. She guards the cows. So she guards all the calves to make sure that if a coyote gets after them, she will kick their butt. <laughs> and that's why I can't bring my dogs up here in the pasture. So let's look. We just moved them over here and we just moved the fence right here also. 
kind of see how this is all segmented off. So again, our central point right here is the cattle waterer. We've got about an acre and a half paddock right here. That's what the cows are on for this 12 hour segment. We got a fence here. We've got a fence right here. We've got another fence there, another fence there, and another fence there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six paddocks for the cows to be on right here. This is the mirror fount water and it's filling up. You might wonder what, what the heck are these balls in here for? Well, these balls float up in the winter time and help insulate this. This is a frost free water tank. And then the summertime they come up and they close and they keep the mosquitoes out. So we move, we mob and we mow. The thing that you need to know is that if you just open up this big piece of pasture to the cows, we're not getting the full benefit of moving, mobbing and mowing. That's why folks are having to worm their animals because they're on a large piece of land, just like this, a large pasture and they're grazing right beside their own manure. Would you like to eat right beside your own manure? No thanks, not at all. Now you see a lot of different types of forage out here, various types of forage. This is a multi-species pasture, guys, so it has all sorts of different types of grasses. We have fescue grass, we have uh, Lespedeza right here, Cerisi Lespedeza. Um, before I moved out here, this was bare. There was, there was just bare dirt and a bunch of weeds and briars, so it's really, really come along great. The only thing that I regret is not having left more shade trees in the pastures, but they're starting to come up. There's a few areas where shade trees are starting to come up. That's very important to have good shade for your cows. So folks, I hope this little pasture walk has helped you to think about what it means to mob graze your animals and what it means to regeneratively farm. Again, no fertilizer in six years on this piece of property. The cows are doing all the work. They eat the grass, they put out the good butt fertilizer, they equalize the pH in the soil because what comes out of that cow is pH neutral. This soil is acidic and what it's doing is it's bringing back the soil. Let's see if we can find a manure pat from a couple weeks ago flip it over and see what we get underneath there. Earthworms are coming back to the Stony Ridge farm. Look at this, ants, worms, bugs, microbes, all sorts of stuff. There's all sorts of worms in there. That is the key to regenerative farming. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this pasture walk. I hope you learned a little bit about regenerative farming. I hope you understand now why moving the cows twice a day here has really, really helped. I can see them putting on weight. I was moving them once a day out here on pasture and I found that the cows were constantly bawling. They were constantly mooing and calling to me. I started moving them twice a day and now they can't move. They don't have time. They're so busy eating and the cows have put on, I'm gonna say most of the mama cows have put on about 50 pounds in the last two weeks, just from me moving and mobbing and mowing. Also something you need to think about, I'll pop up a little video of the cows right now. There are no flies on these cows. There's no flies out here in this pasture. Do you see me swatting at flies? Go to most farms, you're gonna see cows walking and waiting in manure. You're gonna to see tons of flies. They have to medicate for flies. They have to medicate for worms. They have to medicate for everything. Guys, this is the way farming should be. And this is the way food should be. Thank you guys so much. Please tune in for the next video on regenerative farming. I'd love to see you back here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We've got tons of stuff coming. Thank you. Take care, guys. See you next time. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Found 33. <laughs> All the topsoil is in the Cape River. Fear, uh, <laughs> Cape Fear River, not Cape River Fear. Lick it. Please lick it.